How are you doing today, folks? Now, this is the third take of this unboxing because it has an ungodly amount of packing peanuts, but I think we're finally ready to go. So the box is all tore up because there was just packing peanuts on packing peanuts, and it was absurd. But this is a $800 box of stuff from Blade HQ. The majority of that budget is in this piece right here. But before we get to that, let's talk about a little free multi-tool for Knife Week. I'll probably never use that. So if you want this, pay shipping and it's yours. Um, we also have a little keychain, decent little quality keychain, rubber and probably aluminum if I had to guess, because it's very stiff. And then we have a knife. In particular, we have the Boker Quaken Auto, which I actually did not know existed. Now, the main thing I bought was what's in that box right there. This box, to be clear. But I saw this, and I was like, that is actually really interesting. I'm going to check that out. Now, this is a $100 OTF. So Microtex normally range for between three and five. Um, Guardian Tacticals are between three and four. Uh, ew. Most OTFs that are actually decent are over $100 because making an OTF, frankly, is fucking hard. Boker is a very much a hit and a miss company. They have certain models that I love, and they have certain models that I hate more than anything else in our entire industry. I just think they're fucking terrible. The Lucas Burnley Quaken is a really interesting design. I've had a few of the flippers over the years. But this is the... Wow. What's in my mouth? <laughs> Ew. This is the Boker Burnley Quaken OTF. So as far as just the actual presentation goes in this Blade HQ Blue, this is actually really fucking pretty. I appreciate the symmetrical screws. I like how they have this tapering down for, you know, like fist grip, anything ever goes bad. Um, as far as the actual texturing on the button, you have your pretty basic, you know, step pattern, but it's... Not super aggressive. You can definitely still feel it, but it's not as aggressive as like a Microtech, for example. Um, as far as the action, not bad. Actually, not bad at all. Let's see if we can get it to misfire. I mean, it's reliable. Um, as far as safety goes, usual. Stabbed it into a box, pierced about a quarter of an inch. Pull that back out. A little stiffer now, which is interesting. Um, definitely not a problem or anything, but it is a little bit stiffer. See if doing it again fixes it. It's stiffer still. Huh. Okay, that's weird. Had a lot of OTFs. They all have pretty much the same mechanism for safety where you like deploy it into something and it like, it still will, to be clear, it'll, it'll stab you. I've done it to myself before because I'm an idiot. I was curious about it and went, what if this will hurt? Yeah, it, it hurts. Don't do it. It'll go in about that much. It's not a lot. It's not going to kill you, but it'll definitely hurt. So don't do it. But they all have the same mechanism, right? But none of them actually get stiffer to deploy when you use it. Like, this is actually getting really hard to deploy. So I'll know about that one. Um, as far as the actual blade, Jesus Christ, this is turning into a fucking combat throw it on. As far as the actual blade, um, the blade to handle ratio on OTFs in general is pretty bad. This one is goddamn atrocious. Like you have this massive freaking handle, which fits my size 2XL hands. This is about 
definitely bigger than an Ultra Tech. I'd say it's probably almost Combat Troodon as far as the actual length. Um, the width is definitely thinner though, both right here and right here. But it's you know it's a pretty sizable OTF. But the blade is so tiny. I mean, you definitely do get that Boker quaking aesthetic, but I mean, not really. It's there technically. Um, this is also in D2, which is a great material for like axes and certain fixed blades. Um, for a folder though, that's really, really budget for being a hundred bucks. Like I would at least want like 14C28N, something, you know, a little more substantial, but, uh, you know, it's, it's not bad. I will say the action is weird. Like it felt really good at first, almost like guarding tactical levels of smoothness, not quite there yet, but pretty close. And then it just got stiffer and noticeably stiffer. So that's weird. I don't know why it does that. So on to the main event. If you guys know me and not know the channel, right? If you guys actually know me, because I talked to a lot of you guys on Facebook and Instagram and everything else, you guys know I love axes. I love axes. I love tomahawks. I just love weapons in general. Um, got a fucking war hammer. Like, <laughs> There's no purpose to have these in the real world because, you know, I carry a firearm. Things are going to go bad. I'm going to shoot somebody before I, you know, turn into a Viking warrior and go, ah, attack them with an axe or a war hammer. You know, I'm just going to go fucking shoot you. But, uh, you know, it is what it is, right? It's, it's just cool. So this is the Paragon War Party, which is a little bit mall ninja, a little bit art piece, and hopefully functional because I'm very much a user. This is a pretty big box. So I'm opening this off camera. So in the big box is a still a big box, but a thinner box. And in that is Jesus. One second, folks. This thing is like wrapped in layers of fucking plastic. Um, okay. In all that, we have this. This is insane. So as far as how it feels, well, actually, let's go about, you know, how it looks first. This is all carbon fiber. We have a full tang construction with a G10 liner over the actual full tang. Then we have carbon fiber right here, right here. Nice little accent points. A lot of hardware. So all of this is all held together with these like freaking bolt things, but there's a lot of them, but it kind of has a cool appearance to be honest. And that tapers down into this nice contour G10, which honestly feels pretty damn good. Now, this is insane looking. This is either going to appeal to you or it's not, and there's not going to be much of a middle ground. But I like it. Uh, this is nuts. Um, this is a $550 tomahawk. So this puts you in some of the custom tomahawk range, like Omnivore Blade Works and stuff like that. Um, it also puts you in RMJ range. So if you want one of the amazing strikes, um, I have a Berserker around here somewhere. Love that thing. There's a lot of amazing tomahawks from RMJ. So this puts you in that range, but I mean, this definitely has its own very distinctive look. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just noticed that too. Look at the grind. That is badass. Wow. And it goes to this like pretty aggressive point here, which would probably split wood fairly well. Um, is it sharp? Not really. Do a fingernail test real quick. Um, it bites down, but just barely. So those of you that aren't aware of that, if you take a blade on your cuticle or your, on your nail right there, if it's sharp, it'll skid off. If it's dull, it'll bite in. It's not the best way to tell electric tension to be very, very clear, but it's a decent one. And it's one of the ones I use a lot on video because I don't really want to pull out a piece of paper and go, shh. 
especially not with an axe, because an axe does not need to be super sharp to split wood. Mainly, you're dealing with the actual bit, which has a tapered sledge, which then hits bites into the actual wood, and the force of your momentum is actually what's going to break it. The difference between an axe and a tomahawk, for example, is that an axe head is inherently heavier, so it's meant to utilize that strong downward force. A tomahawk, on the other hand, has a very light head, generally speaking, because it's meant to be fast. Because it's not so much meant to go through wood as it is through people. Um, it definitely does still process you know, wood, kindling. I've hunted with tomahawks. I've skinned game with tomahawks. I've fully dressed and processed a deer with the tomahawk. It's not the most ideal thing, but it definitely is still doable. But an axe, on the other hand, is meant to chop. And I think this would actually be a very good chopper. Now, as far as the sheath goes, this is the actual sheath. Um, it's listed as Kydex. This doesn't feel like an actual Kydex, to be honest with you guys. It's also pretty flimsy. Like, that shouldn't happen. Um, I understand they have to accommodate for the actual, like, spike right there. But, I mean, there's so many tomahawks out there that do that, and they don't have this big opening. So, I question the uh, actual strength of the sheet. So, let's go ahead and try this real quick. This is fully locked in. It's right here and right here. Hear all that, folks? That is very, very loose. So, try taking it out. It takes a little bit of force. We also have a belt clip here. Oh. Okay. Let me see. Let me see if I can show this to you guys. When you hold the belt clip, see how this opens up a little bit. So, for example, right, this is on your pants, and you're just walking. Notice how that's already coming out. Lock it back in. It moves inherently a little bit, but with this actual clip, yeah. Um, let's see. I'll move my feet. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, that's not safe. Um, I can't do that on camera. because If I do that, it's going to be way up here. And I might, you know, this might fall weird and just like, you know, cut my dick off or my leg or hit my foot or any number of things. But to give you an idea, I had it like this about maybe an inch off of the ground. All I did was shake it, right? I wasn't holding on to this at all. I was just shaking this and this fell out. Now, I was shaking it to symbolize the actual, or symbolize the, um, not symbolize is the right word, um, to imitate the movements that if you had this on your belt and you were walking and it lasted like what, five seconds and it fell out? Um, I don't know if they're all like this. Maybe that's just a QC issue on this one, but. That's not retention, folks. Like, I'm not using a lot of force at all. Let me try to demonstrate that again. So if you just pull it like this, it's not really going to come out because this beard thing hooks into this piece. So if you pull it straight, it's not going anywhere. When you actually have it up here, because naturally you're putting weight because this is a heavy piece, it pops straight out. The retention is very, very poor. Um, so much so that I would honestly say, even though I was going to give this a glowing endorsement because it's fucking crazy looking, this thing is insane. I would say really, really don't buy it because that, that's not okay. That's really, really not okay. Now, I have a category in my channel, right, that I've only ever applied to, I think, two pieces, right, in my years of doing this. And that is the buyer beware category for not a maker, but for a product. And I'm going to say, as far as the Hogue War Party, buyer beware. Um, the actual axe itself is badass. I think it's made really, really well. It's heavy. So be aware of that. This might look like it's all milled out and hollowed out so it'll be light. This is about two pounds if I had to guess. Like, this is a weighty beast and it's very, very head heavy, so it will definitely chop well. But that sheath, 
That is honestly unacceptable. If it didn't have the belt loop right, if it was just like this, you know, and you're just supposed to carry it like that. So, for example, the sheath is there to right, keep you from cutting yourself, but you have to hold it like this in order to do it. Or up here, or something like that. Different story. But because it has that belt loop that just pops out so easy, that's dangerous. And I would really heavily suggest anybody to either A, not buy this, <clears throat> or B, if you do, be prepared to send it out to a qualified maker and have them do a custom sheath for you because that is not okay. Now, as far as the actual ergonomics in hand, feels really, really good up here. Um, I like bearded axes because I do a lot of woodworking, so I like to be able to choke up on it and be able to do feather sticks and kind of carve shit out. Um, it doesn't feel bad. Um, this little hook right here, as you can see, it digs into your knuckles. So I don't understand why it was designed that way. If you wrap all the way around, uh, it still digs into your knuckles. It doesn't hurt right now, but if I were to actually really start using this thing, it definitely would. And a little bit of that rubbing over time will definitely give you blisters and cause issues as well. So that's not really good. I mean, I got big hands, y'all, but like I don't have that wide or that thick of fingers. So I think this is going to be a problem for most people. If you have very thin fingers, probably not a problem at all. But other than that, maybe stay away. Um, I'll also say the branding, like, so this is a collaboration piece between uh, Sakura Blade, uh, Blade and Nemoto, N-E-M-O-T-O -O Design, and Paragon Knife Works or Asheville Steel. This is kind of cool. I like the logo. Um, I honestly wish it was, like, just up here and, like, turn properly because it's supposed to be able to see it like this, which is kind of dumb honestly my, my humble opinion but it also has the same thing right here this is such an interesting design and it's so you know art focused based that i wish it wasn't there because it kind of takes away from the actual piece um i like the carbon fiber i like the style of it all i will say this looked different not much different to be fair but definitely different in pictures i think it looks a lot better in person um, also, let's talk about this thing. This would be a very effective skull crusher or a, a lanyard. But people with like, so as far as like processing wood and everything else for a lanyard, you want it up here because your, your purpose, right, is to be able to have, to hold the handle, to have an extra lanyard piece right there to secure your hand to it. Because down here, what you're doing is that if you let go of this piece, you have a pendulum. That could smack into your arm, your body, whatever the case may be. Will you lose your like your, your, your freaking axe that way? No, but you might find it in your arm or your body. So, like normally speaking, you would want a lanyard to be up here. Um, I would probably thread through right there and have a middle ground hitch right here, and then to be able to secure my hand to it during actual really hard use. But just having one right here, you know. Not the best idea. Um, again, this is more like design over function. So I sort of understand and kind of forgive it. But at the same time, if it's a danger to the end user, it's probably not a good idea. And as far as that sheath goes, that is definitely a danger to the end user. So either A, buyer beware, or B, you know, expect to buy a sheath because that is fucking dumb. You know, honestly, if they just had like a retention strap, so have this, pop it back in, and then have something that goes from right here to right here and have it nice and secure, or from right here to about like right here, or even have it thread through this, this might be kind of a problem. It will be a lot more secure. You know, it's because this whole thing opens like very easily. It's all very kind of sloppy loose feeling that you have the problem so for that i really can't recommend this product even though i really really like it 
Um, this is going to be exchanged at Blade HQ because I want to see if they're all like that. Maybe it's a fluke. I don't know. If it is a fluke, I will definitely update the comment section and let you know. If you do not see an update, it means I got the new one in hand and did the exact same thing. And again, buyer beware. It's badass. It's definitely unique. But um, personally, I would stay away. Now, as always, folks, I love you all. Please take care and bye-bye.